everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa. And today I'm so excited to show you how you can paint step by step in acrylic on canvas, totally explain for beginners, a coastal scene. This is a coastal landscape with a distant view and a field of yellow flowers. So if you're wanting to know how to paint far away ocean and distant cliffs and distant hills and how that pulls up into some floral scape, this is the lesson. For this lesson, we have tons of stuff for the new artist. We have really great camera views brought to you by my husband, John. Hello. He makes sure that as I'm explaining a technique or explaining a tool or color mix, you can really see what I'm talking about with the camera. And you always have an excellent and up-close view of the canvas. On top of that, we have as resources for you learning how to paint a step-by-step -step mini book that's free to download, a traceable if you don't feel like drawing, a grid if you want to draw, but you just want to have a little help with the orientation of objects. And that's also actually pretty helpful during the painting process to know where you want to put things. Um, there is so much extra information. There are groups for you to share the artwork with. If you came here for Acrylic April, it's day 29. Congratulations, you're doing so good. Acrylic April is a 30 painting program that's free where you learn how to paint water in landscape. And that program is supported with all those materials that I just mentioned for each video. If you're here because you thought, oh, wow, this lady's talking a long time. I just wanted to know how to paint a landscape. We got that too. You could do that too. Remember, there's always fast forward. We have the steps marked out. This video is chapter and time stamped. Mm -hmm. So that matches the mini book that we're releasing. Um, and I really love that about these has been like something we've really wanted to do for a while. I'm so glad we've managed to make this a realization. Oh yeah. Oh, try to last the curly April, <laughs> but this year we did it. Be good to your, but no, you're going to get your paint, get your brushes and come back and meet me at the easel right now. For today's painting, we're going to be using an 8x8 surface. I have on it the wish for you if you're painting along is that you have an adventure every day and that you explore your imagination some way every day. I have the colors Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Medium, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Green, I mean Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, Mars Black, and Titanium White. This is the Thalo Green. This is the Thalo Blue. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is the materials and you've been informed if you'd like to know more about those materials remember to check the description below or the website because it will have the full list of brushes uh when you see this video that we use and any other materials that we've used so that could be very helpful to you let's just go into step one So for step one, we've got to kind of block out the major objects. And I'm going to go ahead and use a watercolor pencil. I'm using watercolor pencil. Uh, you could use colored chalk. You wouldn't want to use a crayon. You wouldn't want to use uh, like a, a wax pencil or an oil-based pencil. You want to use something that could easily dissipate into the water of the paint. I'm going to come up here into the upper area. And I'm going to use a tool called a T-square to make a very level distant line. That's going to allow me to know where my horizon line is. Another thing that I can do is I'm going to come here and mark at the halfway mark point and again at the halfway point. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me to break the canvas up into basically... Four areas. Now, if you go to the website, there's going to be both a traceable, a grid reference, and as mentioned, the step by step. You can use any of these or exactly this method. All of them work. You just want to pick the one that you feel comfortable with. Now, here, if this is our distant horizon line, I can kind of talk a little bit of maybe a distant mountain kind of coming back. Mm -hmm. And then, Bring another little peninsula sort of forward and coming back. I'm just putting in my little land masses. These are distant hills, mm -hmm. like little California kind of style hills. This one comes forward a bit. Peninsula's in. And what's great is on some of these, right, like there'll be like a little bit of a cliff kind of face that may come back into the space that we can play with. These will all be from fairly neutral colors. Yeah. Right. This will come down here. 
to that midway point. You can bring a little cliff here. Now, the shoreline here comes down, interestingly, almost on a vertical line. It does kind of curl in, mm -hmm. but it's almost vertical, and we may put another little cliff down. So it's sort of an interesting view. You're up on a cliff looking down at the ocean. It creates an unusual viewpoint for you guys, for the viewer, for anyone coming into the painting, really. Hmm. I'm bring that here. Holding these, you got to erode your cliffs, my friend. <laughs> it's a weird thing, but you do. You got to erode your cliffs. So I can bring a wave here, and then I can know that I have waves kind of rushing up here along my shore. We can also say there might be little rocks here, little rocks in the distant water. So these are always fun things that you can play with is how the waves approach the shore. And then really, here we have such a large mass of wonderful flowers that is letting us peek through to this seascape. So that is how the major structures of the seascape line are in. You could use the traceable and put that on right now. You could use the grid if, and, and use all the grid to do a more uh, control drawing, or you can use this method. Again, any of it will work. On to the next step. So I'm going to begin by going into the back sky area. I'm going to take a number six round uh, brush. This is a hog bristle, so that's a natural bristle mm -hmm. um, that we have. And I'm going to kind of erase my wonderful words. And you can see what I mean by watercolor and that they erase. That's an important part of your painting. I'm yes. going to take my white, kind of load it up on my brush here, and I'll flip it so it's fully loaded through. And I'm going to grab just a little of my ultramarine blue for the sky today. The sky blue. Yeah, just a little bit of the ultramarine blue, to kind of to start. It's a little bit distant and grayer. Not as bright as, say, some skies could be. I can always mix a little ultramarine blue and phthalo, and it brightens the sky and come up at the top and add a little bit of dynamic color. A little bit of personality right here, brushing carefully through. Mm -hmm. I like to wipe my brush off on a towel every once in a while and get the extra moisture out. And I'm going to add some more white here. This is just a very distant sky. I can take a little white into my brush. You can kind of see it's like it's implying just this, just the distantest sky. Yeah. Just a little something far away that we can enjoy. Woo, sky. Sky. <laughs> Step done. On to the next step. So for this step, we're going to start putting in some of the distant hills. I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine blue over to my burnt sienna. It kind of make a teal. I want a little more ultramarine blue into it. And then I throw in my burnt sienna. And this is going to kind of go a little gray. A little gray green. We're going to paint this far hill, even grayer green than that. That's too, too colorful. What was mm. it thinking? A little gray green off in this distance. Yeah, I don't know what that hill is thinking, but it just needs to just know its place in the far, far lands. I'm going to pull a little more gray. Uh, green and brown in. And so, you know, it's not a bright green, but some of that is just because it's a little far away. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep taking my number six brush. And at first, we'll talk about this part of that hill. Kind of a greeny. Very kind of muted green. It's Beauty not heel. 
It's not. It's not bright. We'll have some deep values and we'll have some highlights in there, but this base green is is a little muted. You know, I can bring a little brown into it and a little yellow into it here. Yeah. Grab a little white. Come along that distant space. Mm -hmm. As you do. Well, as, you do. as we all do today, <laughs> hopefully, making a little light, little shoreline that we might think about. And you can even sit there and talk about a little bit something happening at the base of the hill. You want to just kind of don't be too detailed about it. Mm -hmm. It's just the beginnings of some thoughts that you're having. Your green and brown come together and they can make some very nice dark, high, like dark values. So you could sit there and say, pull a little erosion gully from the hill there. And, you know, because these little, these little hills, they kind of erode. Mm -hmm. They kind of do this little erosion thing. Well, that's what happens. Gravity and water. Gravity and water. And I can come over into my... Yellow with the uh, very muted green. Speak a little bit about a highlight here. And it's really, I want to, I want to get it. If I have too much water in my brush, I've got to wipe it off on a towel. I just want to make sure that I've got some personalities because these hills have personality. Mm -hmm. I'm very gently laying the paint over the top. I can go back into my brown and green easily to get different kind of hill values, which is important. It is important. Back into the green and yellow and white. Just talking about some different little faraway bits. They're far hills. Mm -hmm. In them far hills. <laughs> Brown and the yellow. Green hill. And white. Get some distant kind of land. Yeah. Just a little rolling shoreline there. You got to just get a little rolling shoreline. And this is really like this this first thought of, of it. We've got to come back and put some other details in, but this is just our the beginnings of our thoughts about that space. Yep. Sometimes with the paint it takes a couple layers to really look finished and you're just getting some values in. Bring some of this green down here in the mid space. Now, an interesting thing, I can get a little black on my brush and a little white on my brush and a little ultramarine blue on my brush. I don't actually need to get, even rinse it out almost. Start to add some gray here. And even gray here. Yeah. Down the beach here. Down? Down the beach. Goes. Just right down the beach. 
push that out. And this is kind of that bristly brush. Just, yeah, I'm just using a bristly brush. I'm kind of loosely sketching in the paint at this stage. And this is very dry brushy? It's, it's very, it's, the, I wish the brush were drier. It's not that dry, but it's very similar in a. <laughs> I wish it were drier. I do. I wish it were drier, but it's, it's holding a little bit more water than I would like right now. Well, I can start a fire if you'd like it drier. <laughs> Don't need it that dry. You never get like, it's always like the two stages of too dry, not dry enough. So I'm just pulling these browns and greens and blues through here. This is this kind of like initial loosey goosey uh, sketch space. Uh -huh. So we're not. We're at that beginning stages of things. Yeah. There's a lot to do and say. We don't need to be that specific at this stage. Now, we're going to want to rinse this brush out the thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Dry it out the thoroughly. The th dry this the thoroughly and come back and put in deeper and lighter values and some different hues and colors to create the distant hills that are coming down our coast. So I'm going to use a number four round in my r triple line, but it's really basically synthetic round with a good point. And you can see it's a little different than the hog. They have a bit of a different personality. I'm going to get it wet, and I'm going to come in and take a little of my phthalo green and burnt sienna. We're going to come to the distant little mountains. And using this brush, we don't have to be super particular about it but you do want to kind of sketch with it a bit yeah that Down really helps here. construction of that it will it's gonna it's gonna kind of pull in some construction and you know let me tap out some like Those are distant weird little trees. Distant tree. It's kind of, it's sort of helpful sometimes to mm -hmm. just get the different layers of Everything in. Yeah. A little more brown, maybe. Mm. The hills happen. Hills happen. Especially anywhere there's this kind of erosion. Mm-hmm. You definitely have some hills be happening. You know, painting some distant little trees. Little loose, distant, dark shapes. These are kind of, you pull that in. Now, if I get into my yellow here and I can get the yellow right onto my brush, I'm not rinsing. even add some white to it. Just creating some little thoughts where yeah. maybe there's I like how the, the highlights come across there. I'm yeah, always talking about the highlights, but I do. You like the highlights. I'm You're my highlight. highlight. You're my highlight of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said it. I mean it too, so. That's the important part. Get a little white in here. Do, do. 
Those far away, them far away hues and colors. Mm hmm. Just up those hills there. Up them there hills. Something or something. Kind of fun little thought. And so now they seem like little far away bits of something. Uh huh. That's very far away. So it's kind of more in distant, foggy shadow. Yeah. You know, you can even get a little of your brown and black involved if you feel that you must. Sometimes you must. Ooh, that looks nice. Just a little shore. A little bit of a thought there. What are we doing? We're going to find out. Now, we have a lot of this sort of decomposed granite that's like a gray. And it definitely is impactful to like our beach color or any of that. And then I've got my brown. I'm going to get a little brown, yellow, and red together. Mm -hmm. I'll come along here. Kind of fun there. Little more brown. I like how that looks like a little tiny field out there. There's just space back there. But you still have to like, you know, you've got shadows, you've got things that you've got going on. black mm -hmm. along the beach there nice a little far away i'm gonna dry things a bit so i can get some more values on here mm -hmm. so just real quick we're gonna dry we're not going to step we're just gonna dry I'm going to continue just adding values, highlights, and shadows in the far distance. And the reason we do that is because, you know, objects far away, they'll have lots of hues and bits of texture, but not a ton of detail. So it's important that we kind of play with those things. Mm-hmm. On the faraway coast. Little brown and yellow and red is always fun. There's stuff there. 
There's just not a lot of like detailed stuff. You can always get into what's happening there. All right, let's call that a step and we'll start working on these slightly closer clips. We've got some distant stuff and we're pulling some slightly closer. I'm going to get back into my six round in my hog for just a little bit. And I will maybe put a little blue into my gray color that I have here. I'm going to pull in a slightly lighter value mm -hmm. as you would have. And I'm going to definitely come down into the shoreline. Yeah. With a very, very light value of sand. This is the reason that it's gray is because of the composition of the soil. Hmm. I didn't know that. Coming forward, it might get darker. Yeah. Decomposed granite is often this kind of weird gray color. Maybe the sand got a little more wet over here. And so that's perhaps why it's darker in that space. Mm. But that doesn't mean that I won't brush up a little bit of a highlight. And just playing with those two things. Getting a little more blue onto my brush. Come up here and kind of add a little bit of a downward erosion I like a downward erosion let's well, gravity at work gravity be at work and I'm gonna just scumble a bit some of this gray here scumble a little bit this gray here as well yeah Scumbling is kind of a very scruffy little brush stroking motion. Hot messy at first. Doesn't look like anything. I'm going to grab a little of my black and brown and my yellow. Hmm. And begin to sort of like Engage and disengage the brush. Yeah. Is really what it is. I'm not I'm not keeping the brush completely engaged the whole time. And I am letting some kind of random areas of green kind of come into that. Little white, little yellow in that green up the top. Wipe my brush off just a smidge. Mm -hmm. and I'll get some of my darker green. I'll add it down the cliff some. Oh, yeah. I don't want to take my gray out so it doesn't show at all. I'm going to get some of my brown as well. Just imply that there's some. A lot of white on my brush. 
very light gray here. Pulling that there. Yeah. Really comes out. Let me try to get it out. I hope that it comes out. A little more brown than that. Mm -hmm. I got a little yellow on me. But it won't ever really hurt me because oftentimes there's a lot of uh, mineral deposit in the soil. And as it runs down... It has more color than you'd think. Huh. Really does as it erodes away. As it erodes away. Just getting along. And kind of like brush everything through my brush and get into the paint. I get another little gray. Yeah. And then I can get a little dark color in there and maybe there's a couple areas that have, you know, dark values. Mm -hmm. A bit along there. Yep. And then back into you know, that sort of fun space. Yeah. And I'm not rinsing my brush out a lot, which is different than kind of, you know, what we sometimes do. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to. You don't want to get bright greens. I'm taking my brush along here, and this is on, this is a dry brush, and I'm bringing it along the side to create that sense. I'm going to add a little red here. That looks cool. Just getting different. Yeah. Different spaces sort of set aside. A little lighter and the gray coming down here towards the beach. Uh huh. Eroding away. Eroding. Some erosion. It happens. Erosion does happen, though. Seriously, all the time. It's a slow process, generally speaking. <laughs> I'm going to switch out brushes, and that's just so I can get some areas where I'm going to be a little more specific. So, like, I might get a little of my black and a little bit of my ultramarine blue. along there let that be into a little shoreline ooh the shoreline crisps up yeah you gotta crisp up the shoreline a little bit not too much but just a little bit darken that sand coming out uh 
a little bit there. I'm going to add some crags and bits that go go there. I'm going to take my burnt sienna and, <laughs> and my phthalo green and, again, some cad yellow. Get some of the white into here, get a very light color. Mm. Pull some texture down into the paper. This reminds me of model trains for some reason. Huh. Oh, I feel like this is a place that they would go. It's a place that they would put a railroad for <laughs> sure. All right. Let's call that a space and come back. We're going to add some water. So now I'm going to put in some water. I will use my number six just because it's out. And again, I'm going to go into my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue and a little of my phthalo green. And I'm going to come across here. Try to make sure that your horizon line. is fairly crisp. That's what I'm doing is just making sure I'm going wiggling to just make sure I've got a nice horizon line. And where I want to go between these, I'll be a little precious there. You know, where I want to be between the land masses. Even as I go forward, maybe I can have a little more ultramarine blue. I find it's good to vary up the blues. The water is pretty busy biz mm -hmm. and depending on depth and reflection and what's around it can go anywhere from you know a uh, bright aqua to a uh, deep ultramarine or deep blue so i like to play with those what you see me doing here mm -hmm. And it does tend to kind of come in quicker than you'd expect. Even as you put the water in, your mind just really knows what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I can put my rocks back in, so I'm not that concerned. They go into my... Phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Now, interestingly enough here, I'm going to start to kind of curve some of my brush strokes a little bit. And I'll take these uh, past back into the Thalo green, ultramarine blue, and thalo blue. Mm -hmm. I like the blue. So just what's important as we go to the shore to kind of curve these. They're going to curve. Don't be too worried because a lot of this is going to be covered by plants. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving myself enough kind of rough texture to kind of go, oh, that's right. There's there's a current here and then there's a current here and that's how that's happening. And take a little of my phthalo blue and I'll go ahead and pull some white in. Make sure that everything has at least a coat of blue. The blue can be a little transparent, so I like to do it in a couple of layers. 
So let's dry this and come back and add the second layer, which kind of pulls all the water in together. So we're going to put some color and dimensionality and texture into the water. Oh, yeah. I like my phthalo blue and phthalo green together. And just coming back here, we'll go ahead and kind of brush through in just the second layer sometimes of paint. Really makes kind of a big difference. If you want to get a little white on here, you can. You know, I can add little elements of personality here and there. As we go into the, the shore, make sure that it's nice and deep. Sometimes I'll come back with like just pure blue. Little turquoise, just again. The layers really build up is what it is. Little curve brushing, which is slightly lighter values. This is just a subtle thing. And then even kind of out here, making little areas that are far off. Uh-huh. No, that's too much. You got to be careful with how much you do out there because if it's too much, it will really overwhelm the eye. And I may oh, yeah. switch to my number four round, so I just have a little bit of control over how much. Okay. Those little highlights up there along that shoreline. Yeah, it, no matter how far it is, there's going to be a little bit of that. Glint. There just is. Not even a glint. It's boats or waves or rocks or distant things. Hmm. The ocean is. I think we mentioned this before, kind of a living thing. Yeah, it's a, it ebbs and flows for sure. A little bit of white into that. You can see we just kind of break that up. And again, yeah. that's suddenly a, that's a, something's a foot. Something's a foot. A feet, maybe? <laughs> it's just, it does its thing. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to take some black. Let's put a rock here. Like you do. Got to give the seals a place to rest. Mm-hmm. They just they need it, and uh, so the sharks don't eat them. So they can feel that way at least. Well, I mean, while they're on the rock, they're okay. <laughs> they leave the rock. That's anybody's business. But <laughs> while they're on the rock, it could be it could be okay. Could be. Just gotta gotta be eternally optimistic for the seals. They're in a perilous place. They have moments. It's it's definitely. <laughs> I definitely have a heightened awareness of sharkness. You so. do. We've all noticed this this acrylic April. Seals beware. And just pushing that through. What I'm doing is I'm giving the water some perspective and on the way I'm leveling it against the rock. And 
you know, these are things that definitely, definitely are leveled against the rock. Mm-hmm. I can take my turquoise and quite a lot of my white and even a smidge of my yellow. And I may have to turn this to get a good angle on it, but I'm going to come along the shore here and pull this back. If we remember, it's it's kind of like it comes back like this. Darker forward here. A little more yellow, a little more white. Gonna let it get more aqua a couple places. Lighter and more aqua. Well, all that's having a little bit of a rest. We're just creating a lighter value along that shoreline. The yeah. water becomes thinner. We kind of have talked about this from a different perspective constantly, right? Which is the water becomes thinner and more thought out. Now, I'm going to bring a little of my thalo and my green, and I'm going to kind of take my brush and rough out. Rough it out. Maybe some ripples. Rough out the ripples. Yeah, these are like the waves come in at different angles depending on what happens off this coast. Coast isn't like boom, flat beach. Mm. There's a there's a lot happening under the water, uh, creating currents and stuff. So you have to really uh, be thinking about that when you're painting coastlines. Mm-hmm. The stuff that you think about when you are painting. Up close beach scenes are still applicable in perhaps some of these more far off beach scenes. You know, you have to imagine where's the water going to run and how is it going to run. Mm-hmm. You make sure that there's some darker and lighter areas of water. The transparentness of that water is really cool. Loosely kind of curving that back and forth because we're far away. It's there. We know it's there. It's just. Kind of see it there. That's pretty good. Yeah. Let's call that a step because that was sort of a big uh, concept to get in. And then we're come back and do another little set of details. So in this step, we're going to continue to add little highlights or elements that continue to resolve the piece and bring it to a whole. Let's get into our black, a little bit of our uh, ultramarine blue. I guess this is the ultramarine blue. That's okay if you got the blue or ultramarine blue. It's not really at this stage that important. And let's come here and add some highlights to the rock surfaces. Just to give them a little structure, you know what I mean, John? Mm-hmm. Sometimes a little goes a long way. You know, when you're talking about like rocks where it's like, oh, I see what you did there. That's it's just I like it. It helps a bit. I like the shoreline. The shoreline is rather nice. 
You're just is this more dry brushing y? I am coming in and I'm dry brushing a very light color up the hill, just making sure that that looks like, you know, kind of a granite wash down, adding the light colors to the rocks, just kind of going around and going, you know, what needs a little love and attention? Because sometimes things need a little love and attention. Mm -hmm. I'm just touching the brush there. Doesn't take too much to make it work. No. Then I'm going to come through. I'm going to turn to the side here just to make it easier to find the, sh the brush stroke that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to take a little of my white, maybe a little bit of my thalo blue, but mostly my white. Mm -hmm. And come along the shore edge and begin to kind of get some of the sea foam. You know, if I have to get a little blue into it to sort of blend it in, you can see how we do. And it really makes a difference. It's nice to blend it in. The other place that you will often find uh, bits of foam is coming around a rock cropping like this. Because the water is forced to go around it and that churning mm -hmm. tends to kind of create that, that foaming effect. Oh. That makes sense. You know, we don't have enough motion here to be crashing over the rocks, but we certainly have enough. To be uh, crashing a, in the rocks. Like it's rolling into rocks. It's a little bit splashy into rocks, but it's not totally rolling into rocks. I'm going to get some more blue and I'm not going to be sea foamy here. I'm going to be a little bit like, like the water has rushed up maybe a little gentler here. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing to think about is it won't always be, it's not always sea foam. It's easy to get into a state where you're like, it's always sea foam. It's not always sea foam. It's often sea foam. It's not always sea foam. So this is that first kind of off, off white, not totally white level of it. Yep. And then you want to come back, you know, with a, with definitely a, I like to kind of brush some back. Put in the shore. Yeah, just start to put some little shore thoughts in there. Some little thoughts of the shore. I'm going to rinse out because now I do want to get into my brighter whites. And you can see that really just then pops. When you get the brighter whites going, when you have that sort of off white happening. And I, I turn my surface just so that I can kind of get a sense. I just sort of, sometimes what helps me is if I imagine gravity pulling it back. That's not that, that's not at all what's happening. It just helps me imagine it. A totally different force. The force of water. It's okay to bring some of the foam kind of even over into the sand. Because that will make it seem like there's that transparent wave. And we talked about that a little bit, haven't we? Mm -hmm. No. In some of our earlier paintings, if you've been doing the uh, Acrylic April Journey, you're familiar with this concept. of The transparency of water. So it does not freak you out. You're ready for it. Just a little bit of that. It's fun. I like the, the distance of the... The distant little landscape along the shore. Yay! You've been fairly like quiet about the sharks. Is it because we're far enough away from think, the water? I think I can't see them. <laughs> They're down there, you know, and this looks like a fairly calm, rocky shore where the... For sure, there's seals there, there's sharks there. Yeah, it's, you're right, <laughs> it's true. I mean, I'm not going to deny that, but, you know... There's kelp, you know it's happening. I, I mean, I talked about it earlier, the seals on that, that you know... 
But sometimes the kelp will make an almost red brown reflection out in the water. There's a kelp forest. You'll see that kind of happen. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Take a little bit of my yellow and red, but mostly my yellow. Add some interest to the hill here, as you do. A little light from the sun. Well, there's a little mineralization of the more iron uh, water. I mean, the more iron earth. Uh huh. And sometimes it's nice to get that kind of shown because uh, you'll see a lot of color along the coastline that you wouldn't expect, especially in the granites and geology of the area. Yeah. And it's just a great excuse to have to put color into a space, you know. And you're like, oh, I got a little color into a space, and that's kind of lovely. I can come through here and it uh, doesn't need to be a lot. But there will be noticeable, like, stuff falls down the hill. Yeah. Because gravity works. Gravity is fully functional in our universe. Don't test it. Don't test it. There are very few people who can throw themselves at the ground and miss. Very few. I think my dad is one of them. But I ask him not to do it very often because it stresses me out <laughs> so much. But it really does sort of stress me out very much when he does that. So, you know, you put a little bit out there. You're just getting some little little boulders or things that could be along the shore. Your dad has the ability to do that defying gravity thing. <laughs> he really does. He does in every way that he could. You know how like like there's a major disaster and then the only like thing that walked away from the town was one burrow? My dad's that burrow. <laughs> you know, it's just And he's got a he's got a tail about it too. Mm-hmm. Need it to be gray, but still bright. The tricks to these is you want to add the highlights to the shadows. Oh, yeah. And that's when they feel like the rock that they are. I'm getting a gray and adding the highlight to the shadows here. And the same even here on the hill. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that there's some highlights to those shadows. All right. I feel like. This is the step that we did. It's the step of the faraway ocean. And now we get to do a bunch of flowers. Yay. Yay. You know, it's so funny because like along the California coast, there's so many more of those yellow orange poppies. Mm -hmm. But the flowers I picked for acrylic April are like these really uncommon plantings. <laughs> Shall I go with what's iconic? Yes. No. <laughs> go, 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 go. I, I refuse to go with what's iconic, apparently, <sighs> and did not. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and my burnt sienna and my number six, and I'm going to make a very dark, very dark green. It's so dark. This may not even be dark enough. Yeah? Yeah, it's got to be quite dark. The darkest of the dark, dark greens. The dark, dark green along the coastline here. This is definitely some nice coast. Is it some gold coast? I don't know. It looks kind of gold. Uh, I don't think so. No? No. I just wanted to say that. It's geographically confusing for everyone. <laughs> Now, I'm going to take a little of this green here, mm -hmm. and I come into my green-yellow, and green I'm going to yellow. brush that back a good bit. Okay. 
come out here. Mm -hmm. Making interesting shapes. Like you do. Like you do. Like we're all doing. Like we all do. Yeah. We all do a little bit back into the darker green. So we really have sort of this, you know, uh, deep green with these lighter green edges. And this will talk about the depth of the foliage. To put the flowers in any further, you have to have it here and dry. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call this a really short step, but only so you understand where this has to be. It has to be like this and dry. I'm going to come out here to the very edge and I'm going to mix a very light kind of green yellow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to begin to kind of capture the edge. I'm taking my number six and I'm sort of tapping down. I know this area out here is almost a solid line. Mm -hmm. So I can lean into that. It's just a solid line of flowers. Solid line of flowers. I can come in with a little bit of green. Kind of mix that with some dark green. I'll go between the dark green and the light green. Very yeah. little dark green. You'll see me play with those two through here. Kind of talking about deep foliage. Deep foliage. Like deep state, but deep foliage. I actually don't know what deep state means, though. So. Uh, they should not have said that. I don't know. <laughs> I think that I feel like it means like like spies and stuff, but I, maybe I'm wrong. It means something more than what I understand it to mean, for sure. Yeah. So we'll just go Men in Black. Dun dun dun. dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I mean it in that way. Not whatever's like currently going on out in the world today. Whatever has surpassed our need to make flowers. And that's just sort of roughly brushing it in there. Yeah, just getting that next depth of color, right? He really did. <laughs> just getting a nice depth of color. And then I'll come back with that lighter green. Those are the behind bushes? Behind the bushes, greens. Well, what it is is deep within the plant, there's quite a lot of green going on. And you don't want to not have it in here, even as you're painting the... Deep within the plant. Deep within the plant. There even as you're green. painting anything else, you need to have those values kind of... Peeking through the blood, the buds. Mm -hmm. These values, oh, it's very dark right here, though. So I've got to make sure it stays quite dark here and not that many light values. Because it's peeking. And then a little white and a lot more yellow. And just kind of loose random marks here. These loose. kind of represent little leaves and things that are random. not the flower buds, but. There they are. Starting to appear there. Yeah. Little, little leaves. Could be right here. Mm -hmm. Make little marks. Because leaves happen. They do, especially if you leave them alone. <laughs> they just tend to, you know, do you that. Know, I can even get into the green, though, and black. That's how deep it can be down here. Mm -hmm. I could have even done yellow and black, honestly, but deep in there. Because a couple of these spots are quite dark. Mm-hmm. But as long as we have that nice little value set, 
We're doing actually pretty good. It really is. Coming a lot along. Get a little white into that yellow green mix. That's that lighter green. Yeah, we're just trying to capture a bit of the light that does happen, mm -hmm. you know, within a plant. You know, the light will catch, capture a few things. And I can put it in a little bit once the buds are in, but sometimes it's nice to have a bit folded in here and there mm -hmm. before you start. It's a dry again and a deep rinse out. Yep. Dry again and a deep rinse out. So we're going to take a little bit of our yellow and our cat red. John caught me mixing before the cameras were rolling. <laughs> mixing. I'm going to come here. And we want a yellow, but we want that yellow to have a slight cast of orange. Mm -hmm. You know. And these are like little balls, like snowballs. So we've done a spike flower. We've done uh, complex petals. Unofficially, we taught flowers to this acrylic April. Yeah. <laughs> At least loose landscape flowers for sure. So these are more of a snowball shape. So that's usually a flower that's made up of many other flowers. Mm -hmm. Can't really think of a snowball that is just itself. Uh, there's those tower of flowers. But those are, again, made up of many other flowers. Yeah, many other flowers. That's what I'm saying. They're the big, the, you, have to, you have to be like one of those uh, titan, one of those corpse-type flowers to be a oh. big flower. A rose is just one flower, right? Uh, it is composed of many petals, yeah. So a rose is one flower. So you could have a, you could have a pretty big rose bud. Rose. Mm -hmm. Going through here. Making them up. Makes sense. Doesn't it? It does. And these are again, you're, you're painting the shape of the flower. The shape of the flower, but not the but individual not. flower. See, I'm paying attention. You are always paying attention. Not always. It's true. Sometimes I'm just like, uh-huh. What? What? I don't want to get in trouble with his fans. He has his own fan base. Me? Yes, he do. No. He does. His own fan base. It's pretty funny. Except now I've just made your fans mad because I said he was funny. And then they're very serious. They're not like BTS serious, mm -hmm. but they're very serious. Very few fans are, are as, as devoted as BTS fans. This is true. This is true. Very few are. But a lot of BTS fans are creative people. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. There are many creative people of all sorts of fan bases. There are some creative Sherpettes out there. Just saying. Well, we have we have some people that listen to BTS that are Sherpettes. I know. They have a Venn diagram of, of, of fandom. That's right. If you if you take the Venn diagram of all things weird, we're in the center of it. It's true. I'm taking a little bit of my mix and getting uh, yellow into it, but like a little bit of green so that these buds down here kind of maybe have a green cast to them. These are coming up to bloom, but have not bloomed. And for everyone who just Googled Venn diagram, you now know what concentric circles of overlapping interest are. You know what I understand now? No. Non-fungible tokens. Oh, yes. And I also understand uh, the uh, blockchain. 
<sighs> and they just, also understand why it's the biggest contributor to global warming. So that's ironic. <sighs> Lay sigh. It's so many complex things here. It's not that complex. I know, but to get a light. <laughs> it just has of... real world consequences. It's not that complex, though. I'm going to take a little bit of green and I guess I'll get my burn sand. I just want to make a very dark green. Mm hmm. I'm going to come back in and kind of create some shadow spaces deep in some areas. This is where you sometimes go back in and add the drama. The drama. The drama. We uh, met a YouTuber at an event, uh, Rich Lux. Mm, oh. He is a makeup drama channel. I think he's kind of like famous now. I think he's a little bit famous. I think he's a little bit famous now. Not really that surprising. But I remember we were doing like some weird, I don't know, YouTube always makes you play games to like teach you lessons. Mm. And not like to teach you lessons, but like to teach you conceptual lessons because they're Google. So that's what they do. And and we had to do the slide thing. And he, he we were pitching him the idea. And of course, mom and I are like, let's play like drawing games and stuff. And he's just being super patient. He's like, but where's the drama? It's like, if there's no drama, nobody's going to watch. Super true that. I should start a fight. I don't want to start a fight. I don't want to have a YouTube drama. I'll be so annoyed if that ever happens to me. <laughs> Look at my annoyed face. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're going to dry this and then we'll come back with another layer. So we're going to add another layer of brighter color. It can still have a little bit of the red into it, but we definitely want it to be more into the yellow. And I might even let a little white get in here just to, to not only increase its opacity, but maybe some of its brightness. And we will just kind of highlight some of these. Sometimes with more yellow. And they're fun. They just get to be quite colorful quite fast. Mm -hmm. Like you just sort of think about how things are. Mm -hmm. If it's lower, maybe I get a little more red into it, even for the second layer, because it's like a little bit further down in the plant. Yeah. yeah. Or you can even get some green into it. That would be okay, too. It's creating those colors. Yeah. There's flowers I along like the, stars. the coast. They remind me a little bit of marigolds or dandelions. Inchworm, inchworm. Measuring the marigold. I have a loose mix. Mm -hmm. You know, I let it pick up even red sometimes. Just touching them. That way the flower has bright spots and not bright spots. Very important. Yeah. I like the little edges of orange. So now that's looking pretty good. So now they're kind of lit. They're a little cluster. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take a little of my green over here. And I'm going to, in the darker area here, make sure that there's just some 
little bits of light. Otherwise, it'll just be uh, too much of a hole. And the hole will become distracting to the overall painting. So just enough to imply that a little light got down into the deep dark. The deep, into the deep, deep dark. leaves. All right. We're there, baby. You painted a wow, coast. Oh, that looks so good. It's a coastal landscape. And you did it. And you painted it. It has been done. It has been done. That which has been done has been done. This is a really nice, like, gentle look over the edge of the shore. Yeah, so far away, John didn't even have any shark attacks. No, just mild seal concern. It's like there could be seals, but they're far away. I'm using a number one monogram liner to sign, and I'm using a color that does not substantively change the composition of the piece. Yeah, this is just a nice little gentle day painting. So maybe you came by because you just wanted to paint a coastal landscape for yourself and you just would like a step-by-step -step tutorial for that. So it was so great to have your time and attention, and I hope you love your result. If you do, be sure and hit that subscribe button because I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of art lessons for free all the time. And there's tons that I've already done, so lots to paint. If you're here for Acrylic April, whenever you're painting it, whatever year you're painting it, you are on day 29, which is just a wonderful stage in the journey. And I hope you're feeling really proud of yourself and you're starting to know things even before I talk about why they're the way that they are, because that's the point is to understand water and landscape. And so hopefully that's happening for you. Oh, gosh, tomorrow is the last day. Oh, yeah. So I definitely want to see you then. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel real soon. Bye-bye.